Okay. So let me respond to that. Um, for the GR institution code, first thing to note is that ETS send, they can send your official results to schools. Okay, but you will have to pay if you are sending it after you've written the exam. But if, if you put the name of the school, the codes, if by the time you are writing the exam, they will send this result free of charge for you to four schools. They will send it free of charge for schools. So doing that gives you an opportunity to have your official results sent to schools. Okay, so for me, I, I will still advise you, choose some schools, even if you will not be eventually applying to the schools. Choose some schools that you know that there is a very high probability of you applying to the school when you are doing it. So that even if they request for official transcript, you won't have to be paying again for ETS to send. Some schools require just unofficial, okay? And you can definitely use the unofficial. But it's still safe to have at least your results sent to four schools for you free of charge. In case you have a school that you that will request for official transcript and you will have to be paying ETS to send that for you. So I think it's good. Just have like four schools that you know that most likely you will apply to at least two out of these schools. So include those schools when you arrive in the GRE. They will send the official results to them. And if you are not applying to the school again and eventually use those who request for unofficial transcript, I mean unofficial GRE or test calls. That's very beautiful. That's very beautiful. I think in the end, many schools still request for official test calls, even after admission. For unofficial transcript, there are very many schools that request for unofficial transcript too. All the schools that applied for requested for an official transcript uh, before admission. Okay, for example, FSU, it was when I got the admission that I sent the official transcript. I used an official transcript in all my applications, and then, um, of course, you can do that too. You can do that too. Did I answer the question, um, Deborah? Yes, Hello. indeed. Thank you. Um, Samuel Ajayi, please just to add to uh, what you just said. Yeah. Um, Deborah, sorry, this is um, Ola GK talking. Um, for, before you write your exam, you have a short list of schools that you want to apply to. You can have up to 10 or so. And then you already know this minimum score they require. Your exam goes both ways on the exam day. You might do something, you might do your exam, and this course is not up to what you require. Because it's even more than that. So you categorize these schools uh, based on the scores they require. Then you write it in a sheet of paper and you take it along to the exam. So when your score comes out and it's really high, so you're going to put into those really um, you know, top schools with a really high score requirement. Then you send your um, free score report to four of them. Then in addition to that, after the three, three um, four score reports, um, you can send additional, um, I think it's $30 um, or so um, after the examination. But ensure that before you write the exam, as you are preparing, you brainstorm which school you want to apply to, have a list as much as 10. And you know, you've already reached out to these uh, professors and everything like that. Then you note their score code for your GRE um, score report and take it along to the exam. So that's, that's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. So quickly, let's have um, uh, who's the next person according to my list here? So I started everything. Okay, Olani, let's have you. So you can just quickly introduce yourself, what you do, and then what you want to do, and ask any question. You can unmute yourself. Olani. Okay, I think it's not ready yet. I'm trying to unmute you. So let's have um Uluatobi, sir. You, you promise to tell us just something to okay, today. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, okay. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Because I know we are um, journey this meeting from different parts of the world. Uh, okay, so uh, first and foremost, I want to appreciate uh, Mr. Samuel Ajayi for all that he has been doing and for setting up this um, very good avenue for people 
to benefit and to move our lives forward. And my prayer is that may the good Lord continue to bless you, sir, for all that you have been doing. And you continue Amen. To okay, so uh, um, my name is um, Alawudulu Atobi. Um, I studied um, demography and social statistics from Obama mm. Law University. <coughs> At first, degree, at first degree and master's degree level, and um, I'll be um, by spring spring next year. I'll be starting my PhD somewhere in the US. Um, I think that's basically all about one and hour away. sir. I said somewhere around one and a half hour away from. <laughs> okay, it's just an hour away from you. It's like it's less than two hours anyway. Okay. So um, I currently work as a um, research monitor and evaluation officer on the John Hopkins funded project in Nigeria. Um, I think that's basically all that I have to say about myself for now. So you want to tell us about building a strong profile like you built? I mean, okay, you, had no. very, you had a very low GRE score. Yes. Oh, oh, yes, 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 that's true. I remember now. I need, I need that strategy. Yes. <laughs> okay, so let me start this way. I've given it. There's someone here, you know. Is in Pakistan. Um, you had you said you had a very low GRE score too. So those, those are some of us you're saying. I mean, really, really. Oh, that that is very that is very fine. Let me just go ahead. So I've given you a few background about myself. Um, one thing about me is that um, even right from secondary school, I've not been very very good in mathematics. Uh, I'm not a very poor student, and I'm, I've not I've not been very good in mathematics. So I, despite the fact that I, I my minor in school was social statistics. Which is not the pure statistics, I always know what. I, I did well to graduate with statistics and class offer, which I always tell people that it is a, uh, we should always advise uh, many young people in the university now try as much as possible to have a good grade from the university. Um, I'll go on. So, by saying that after that, I went in for my master's degree. Um, Probably I would have done my master's in the U.S. if I had this information um, earlier before I started my master's degree. But, uh, you know, um, God knows why uh, he brought this information to me after my master's degree. Um, let me also say that um, I have a few years of work experience, let's say about five, four to five years, because you know the way we run master's here in Nigeria, you'll be working and you'll be doing master's too. So I have a few years of work experience. Um, at the same time, uh, during my master's degree um, was when I got to know about the possibility of going for my PhD outside the country. I tried as much as possible to, you know, um, get a few publications um, during my master's degree and after, and in like a year, two years after, I was able to get about four or five papers published with about two or three very reputable journals. Then for conferences, I worked towards attending um, two international conferences where I presented and then two local conferences as well. So because I, had, I knew what I wanted, so I, I started working towards all of these things right from time. Uh, so because of the nature of my job and the kind of person I am, I knew that if I decided to, you know, focus on GRE, that GRE would be my saving grace. I, I, I might just be shooting myself in the leg. So that was why I was preparing for all those things ahead. Because uh, the fear that was put in me was that if I, if I don't uh, have a lot of time to prepare for GRE, I might not be able to score very well. And, you know, when I watch YouTube videos, I see the kind of score that all these Indian, um, uh, Indian and Chinese guys score. Yeah. When they tell you they had 315, 320, 325. And yeah. I'll be like, is that even possible? You know, when there's someone like me that was working in Lagos, wake up five o'clock, I'll be in the office by eight o'clock, work till five o'clock in the evening. Uh, all I had to myself was just the two hours that I would stay in the office to wait for traffic, five to seven, before I enter the traffic around seven. You understand? So I had about two, two hours every day to prepare. And I was also working. So I knew all of these things. I factored all of these things into it. And I just considered that what I would do was to build a very good profile. Uh, although at my master's degree level, I had a distinction. 
Um, and I'm very sure that all those things actually played into the, 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 the whole profile and um, got me what I wanted. Um, so when I took GRE, okay, let me just say that I wrote GRE three times. I'm, I'm never shy to tell anybody that I wrote GRE three times. My first score was um, my first score was 286. My second score was 295. My third score was um, 303. Um, but eventually, the program that I'll be attending um, was the one that I submitted 296 to. So that was how I got to understand and know that it is not actually, they are not just looking at your GRE score alone. They are looking beyond your GRE score. They are looking at you as a person. They are looking at your antecedents. They are looking at your past. They are looking at how good your statement of purpose is. Like uh, 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 Mr. Sam Street was saying, I think sometimes last week or two weeks ago, your statement of purpose is also very, very important. You know, so I, I, I knew also, I looked at all of these things and I knew that GRE, I just, so the fact that I wrote GRE three times, you tell you that uh, uh, Jerry was not my, you know, so that is how everything played out. So I knew from the onset that forget Jerry. So I started building my profile, um, public, uh, publications, conferences. Um, I okay, I had a very good grade from school, um, and basically that is all. And I applied to seven schools, I got into all with funding, and that is basically my success story. You understand? So I just tell people that you can do it. Whether you have a tutu from school, um, whether you have tutu, whether you have a GRE score. I know someone that had GRE score of 296 that is in Utah State University with full funding for a PhD. So it is not about one aspect. So if one aspect of your profile, um, you know that one aspect of your will, will drag you down, try to shoot up, try to work hard on other aspects of your profile and you will surely get what you what you want. So that is just my story. Thank you for the opportunity given to me to be able to share this beautiful story to everyone. Thank you. Indeed a beautiful story. Indeed a beautiful story. Okay, quickly let's move um, now Zoom has scattered every time. I can't really say who has not talked again. Um okay Ulwa Femi Oladri let's have you then let's have you Ulwa Femi um he provided uh, what do you call it? Let's, let's have it. My name is Ubafemi. Um. Yeah, you are on. Okay. Uh. I think so. Hello, can you hear us? Hello, Femi. Okay, okay. Let's have uh, Ola Jide, sir. Let's have you. Hello, Femi. We come to us when he's ready. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, everyone. After moving to um, it's nice to be able to I'm Olaji Dei, I think I am. Um, I'm graduated from Nigeria, materials engineering. Um, in 2018, proceeded to Europe uh, for my master's in advanced materials engineering. On that day, Erasmus Mondes. Ah, that's a lot of money. What did you say? That's a lot of money. You are very rich. <laughs> there are can, you, can, you, can you amplify your voice more? Hello. Uh, okay, I'll take that. Can I hear you? Yeah, amplify your voice, okay? Hello. Your voice is very low. Amplify your okay. voice. Okay, can you hear me yeah, now? That's better. Okay, yeah, thank you. Ola Jide Akintayo, graduated from FUTA 20, um, 2016, proceeded to. Uh, yeah. I think Emmanuel Suli is trying to talk. Okay, continue. Okay, so we proceeded to Europe, uh, Erasmus Mondo's master's uh, degree, joint master's. So I'm in between France and Germany. So I should be rounding up pretty soon uh, due to the COVID. So currently I work as uh, the R&D and engineer at Intan at the Appearance University in Europe. 
that should be completed pretty soon. And um, well, maybe there will be some people trying to uh, apply for their Erasmus Mundus uh, scholarship here. It's really a program. Not only the academic aspect, you know, uh, the multicultural aspect, like the, the travels and everything. It's really good. As you all know, about 88 people or so have won the scholarship from India last year. And uh, we got to uh, like, be the top country in Africa uh, to uh, get uh, as much as uh, this uh, number of scholarship. So, um, if you have anything about uh, any question about Erasmus Mundus and scholarship, uh, please you can reach out to me. And you can also, uh, a good place to also be in the Erasmus Mundus uh, Nigeria Facebook page. And it's um, really uh, good things going on there. Yeah, please. Uh, it's effort from uh, past and past present, uh, past and present uh, scholars. So, it's nice to be here. Thank you, I'm Samuel and Jai Yeah, please, before you go, we tell us about, because I know Erasmus Mundus is very competitive, very, very competitive. Tell us, I mean, what are the indicators, yeah, that out, and if someone wants Erasmus Mundus, you want to travel, to, when you enter Europe, now you can enter anywhere. You know, how do you be such a profile? Yeah, well, um, thank you. I think I'm the last guy who talked there, what's his name? Um, Ola Wudi, Ola, someone, right? Uh, you, you really, you really said a lot of you know, um, indicators that you really need. Um, Erasmus Mundus um, program. It depends on uh, the type of program you apply. I'm sure you know we have about um, up to 110 different programs that you can apply to each year. You just pick three out of it, not more. You apply to just three. Um, each program, some are um, very research oriented, some are really uh, uh, professional, uh, professional oriented, something like that. So for you guys in the sciences and everything, a lot will come into your play, into play, your research background, your grades. I tell people, two one is okay to get into the lab. You don't need the test class. This year, up to twenty five people had two one and the cutting out of the eight people. So it's good grade as well. Two one minimum. I mean, like three point seven, three point eight has gotten you, which I know very very fast. And you need your research background, maybe one or two publications, and you don't need to just. Something to show your promise, your research promise, because um, the consortium, the Erasmus program is called the consortium. The consortium wants to know your research promise because they want to invest in people who want to go into, for example, research in the future. So they just transition some of their master's graduates immediately into a PhD. So that's why most of us, we are trying to get a PhD position in Europe. We don't see it, but the truth is they circulate it within their master's students by three mirrors. So you don't see it out there. You only see the likes of that scholarship. And you want maybe PTDF sponsor. You have a lot of in, lot like really juicy ones. And for example, it's my, my school. So all these things play a role. So you try to get your good background, get really good letter of recommendation. And Samuel has stressed it. I will say more than that. It's really very important. You know, you want people with um, uh, who can attest to, uh, attest to your promise. People with an uh, online presence, for example, so that can guarantee as well. So these are the things you need. Make really solid and motivation letter as well. Very important. And then there will be a chance for you to uh, undergo an interview if you get to that stage. So uh, you really put in uh, your, your best into that. Another way is just try and connect with past scholars and try to know, uh, okay, what are the, how do we go about it? How do we do this and that? And uh, I think you can get it. But no doubt it's competitive, uh, but um, it's very possible. Nigerians and did this year, it's yet number one in Africa. So, uh, that's true. That's true. That's true. I'm proud to be Nigerian. Yeah. So, they're already asking you in the chat uh, to drop your Twitter handle. So drop it and follow you, sharp, 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 sharp. To add more to what um, Olajide said, um, I shared the screenshot with uh, Samuel, around with Samuel. 2016, I also got a partial scholarship from Erasmus, but I got a better offer in Belgium, so I just dropped it in. The thing is, like Gide said, understand that for every program is different, and the requirements are also different. And people saying, as long as you are still in the school, try as much as possible to build a very good CGPA. Just yeah. try your best. But nevertheless, for Erasmus, from two and good to one above, you get, you get, a, you get. But the thing is, he pointed out, if you have, if you are going for a research-based program, please just be sure you are going for that research. These guys, when they say yes, yes is yes. They are not. They are one thing with these Europeans, and build your profile very well. If you are good for research, please show it to them that you are good for research. 
as I then, I didn't have a very strong CV as I then, although, but yet I still got a partial scholarship because they wrote to me from Italy. At least I did, um, I applied for math funding by um, like the partial scholarship that I should send them my document and everything. Although I got another offer in Belgium, so I just stepped in. So when you're going for it, also consider that it's very, very competitive. It's very, very competitive. And the pay, the ah, pay is very, very good. Ah, the pay for is very, very good. Important. Very important. <laughs> <laughs> Shopping live now. And the beauty of Erasmus is you study at two least European minimum two minimum two European countries minimum. But yeah. a lot of people study in three countries. But some just spent one year in France, then maybe one year in Italy. But please make sure you build your CV. Make sure you have a good grade. Even if you are in the university now, try and make sure you build that good result. Now I've seen some programs in Erasmus. They don't request for recommendation. Why some they request for one? Like the one I did, they requested for two. But make sure you only have somebody to give you a recommendation letter because they will request for it. And then make sure it's somebody you know that can really write something good about you. And then in the program outline, connect with those who have gotten that scholarship before. They will guide you, especially through that motivational, through that motivational letter as well. And then if you are applying, rank your schools. Also rank the area you want to choose because you're not the only one. You have a lot of people. Like for those that apply for math mode, you have four options. They ask you to rank them according to your own area. Now, if your ranking is also saying something else and then or probably maybe what you have is not in line with what you are saying you might also be a little bit shooting yourself as well mm -hmm. so just try your best follow mm -hmm. the application requirements whatever they ask you to do there's no application fee for Erasmus. you just apply directly submit all your documents you online and that's okay just, just you don't have anything to do yeah, you're not exactly. writing just diary as well you don't you don't need diary you don't need diary you don't submit you don't consider it they never consider i have not seen yeah number two some of them require um, some language test. Yeah. Some of them from Nigeria, you are good to go. Just so get a proficiency letter, letter from, from your registrar. That's all. Your transcript, and then I think that. But some Erasmus program, you need to pay just some service fee, take note. Mm -hmm. But yeah. not so much. Just few, maybe ten percent of them, maybe fifty euros. Especially those schools that are linked to Belgium. So you can just just check out what you need to do, and it's available for every program, from languages, literature, medicine. Everything. I mean, we have 110 programs. It's really wide. Just pick the best theory that you think um, is well suited for your background. And take note: the names are really strange. The name will not come out as electrical engineering. It will not come out as botany. It will not come out as this thing. The name will look strange. It's just the name of the consortium. You need to go deeper. What are they? What do they require? What type of background they want? That's how you know. Okay, this program is suited to to my profile, and then you go for it. Please, on that name, if you are going to apply to any university in Europe, in Europe. Like Jiria said, their names are not conventional with what we have in Nigeria. Please. My friend read Botany, but he got a scholarship to Marine Science, which is basically their own Botany. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't assume that, um, okay, like those that did industrial maths in Nigeria, the industrial maths in this place is what they call business mathematics. So if you are doing industrial maths, you are doing uh, mathematics and economics. You call it industrial mass. Don't go and apply to industrial mass in Germany because in Hamburg, they kicked me away. I applied to the University of Hamburg. I was kicked away. They said I only did them. I didn't do engineering related. So please, before you apply, go and check the course content mm. and curriculum. Is it what you have? Because this guy, the way they named their own courses is not the same thing as what we did. He says something now on engineering. You might see it's something there, but the curriculum is saying something. Maybe somebody from another option. So first of all, read the requirement. Example, University of Cologne. If your degree is not BSc Chemistry, you cannot do MSc Chemistry University of Cologne in Germany. No. They even stated the test press that those that read industrial chemistry, applied chemistry, technology chemistry, whatever chemistry you call it, you can't apply. So please pay attention if you're applying to Europe. Pay attention to what the name or the name they call that study program. And then go through the requirement they ask. And then ask yourself. Some schools, they will even ask you, okay, like when I apply for the Erasmus program. 20 ECTS credit, but for anything related to calculus, they need 10 ECTS credit, for anything related to engineering, another five. So please make sure you pay attention to those things because it's a little bit more different from what you have in the All US. right, that's how you Europeans want to take people to Europe, Abby. You don't want them to come to US and Canada. <laughs> I think for me, um, you don't, um, some of you may want to um, go directly to Canada, to US, but you don't have the resource. Let me tell you my example. When I started, I didn't have the resources, you know, the funds to write diary, uh, to write TOEFL at the same time when I was in my NYC, and also to apply to like six, seven schools with an average of 100 euros, 100 euros, uh, sorry, sorry, 100 dollars application fee. So I had only the money for TOEFL, and I wrote TOEFL, applied to, uh, to Europe, and I got in, 
Then from here, when you are doing your program, you can save up and you have enough money to, so to you know, comfortably yeah, transition yeah. into your dream country, US or Canada. If you want to do express entry, for example, you can go. You don't need to do PhD. I'm you telling you. You can transfer. <laughs> what, so what, here, what? you have the ability and capacity to do that. So sometimes if you don't have the money to go directly for you, look for all this commonwealth. Go first to somewhere that you can transition easily because you have a more solid background to understand. From, you know, these people can trust what is coming from money. They don't, some of them really trust some of our school but. But if you can prove it, you know, from coming from here, of course, there are people who are going to be You should be fine. Yeah, that's a very good point. I mean, I have a friend who won the Erasmus Mundus did in Portugal and Spain and then came over to the US. Uh, he's a now. That's Wally. 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 Yeah, Wally. Yeah, we did. We finished in UI together. Yeah. That's a very good, beautiful suggestion. That's beautiful. If When Zoom kicks us out, we just enter again the same way, okay? Uh, the same thing. All right, thanks for that powerful uh, point. Chidima, you said your network is good now. Let's have it. Okay. okay. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Hi. Hi, Blue Network. <laughs> Don't worry, very soon to change. Okay, so my name is Chidima. Continue, continue. Yeah, my name is Chidima Wanito. I attended Joseph Ayobabalala University of Shun State. I studied architecture and and I currently work with the Nigerian Navy as an intern. Like I'm a copper right now. So countries I've been considering. I used to consider Canada, but uh, I changed my mind uh, along the way. And now Mr. Zagwe, stop, stop. Someone is someone is ditching Canada. Someone is what? Someone is ditching Canada. <laughs> well, brother, go? What can we do, bro? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, so the reason why why I engineering and I don't want to do pure architecture. I want to do something that has engineering because that has been like my interest from day one before even BSc. So I've I have some schools in the US that I'm that I've already researched upon and I'm qualified to apply because sometimes they don't some like some not some schools some pro some architectural engineering programs in the U.S. don't accept architectural BSc students. So I've done my research and I found some accepts um, architectural BSc, what they call them, some professors. And I've gotten some, no, I don't have space or I don't have this. And I've gotten some, yes, you can. Apply, blah, blah, blah. Story. I heard something when Mr. Oluwatobi was, Oluwatobi Alawa Day was speaking. I know he's a PhD aspirant, so everything was from a PhD point of view. He said, um, you have to have you have to have attended conferences, probably maybe spoken in them. You have to have written some research papers, you know, to make your MSc to make your PhD application stronger. So what what can an MSc um, applicant do now to make their own application stronger? Because he was speaking from a PhD point of view. Personally, I'm speaking for myself now. I don't have any publications. I have my BSc. I have my BSc uh, projects uh, that I did not publish. So I don't know if there are other ways an MSc applicant, like other things an MSc applicant can do to make their application stronger. And I'm presently studying for my GRE that I'm going to write either in August or September. I've not registered yet because I want to see by this second week of July how prepared I am. So I can know if it's August or September I register. Okay. Yes, and my second question is what's the, how does a really good um, letter of recommendation look because I've sort of I don't know if it's if it's right but I sort of drafted some for my lecturer so that mine for the Obama write two letters I mean two sentences for me and submit so I've sort of written a, a template I'll send to them like use this to make your own so I want to know what a good letter of recommendation should look like so I can use it to compare with what I have written sorry I said my pick is wicked but I don't know the, I didn't know the right any other words to use to explain what I'm trying to say Okay, Thank you. Before I allow that to be allowed to talk, let me just talk on uh, what you can do for your MSc profile. Now, even if you're not um, published papers, done all those stuff, one of the things you can do is to volunteer in uh, places where you know will enhance your profile. For example, someone who did biochemistry, for example, they want to look at a place like um, IIT, okay. in Manila, for example, to do, you can do internship, internship there. Someone who, I mean, you can just tell them, like, I want to volunteer. It's for you to learn and build your profile. When professors you want to see, can you undo this? What can you undo? So one of the things you can do 
is to volunteer. You can make and volunteer. For. And that's why many okay. times already, you already, about already, the I already have some volunteering experience. I'm presently I'm volunteering uh, um, with a research institute, a raw materials research institute. I don't know if it's, it's sort of not, it doesn't have anything to do with what I want to study, but that was like the best research thing I could find here in ABJ. So I don't know. Yeah, that's, do you think that's, I should look for some other stronger? Um, okay. Mr. Sam, please, I want to say something. Okay, yeah, please. Okay, so let me share my experience. I said that I, I have, I'm a graduate of architecture. But okay, I didn't mention that my, um, the admission I have is in instructional design. I made a complete switch, like it's a radical switch because that's what I want to do. So um, I think what made way for me for my admission was, number one, my resume. I had worked with nonprofits in the nonprofit sector for like two, three years now. That's basically all the experience I have. I don't have, even have anything in, in the architectural space at all. So my recommendation one from the academic and the other from non-profit sector made it but then my statement of purpose you can carve a story from any experience irrespective of um, mm. where you're volunteering is not um, right. looks like it's not relevant to what you want to do no it's about writing the story when i was drafting uh, my statement of purpose i had to sit down and ask myself sometimes my it's like my energy is scattered like i can't say oh this is this does not look like what i want to do but when i sat down and i told myself no this this story must make sense so I had to write it in a way that joined everything together, made it look and made it look like, yes, I knew what I was doing. I actually knew what I was doing. It looked like the energy was scattered, but I, it was just about storytelling. So draft your statement of purpose very well, if it is required, and your resume too. So don't think, oh, I volunteered here. It doesn't look like what I'm doing. No, just find a force to bind everything together, and then I can almost promise you, you get this slow. Okay, okay. we'll be out in less than one minute, but okay. definitely come back. Okay, starting from next time. Problem. Sarah, would you say something once we come back? Okay. Um, you can even start before we get kicked out. 